Hi everybody, happy Thursday. I hope that you have enjoyed the two weeks of Easter holiday break. Um, I enjoyed mine and uh, what a lovely two weeks I had. From the snow hiking one week to the summer countryside walking in my local area the next week. So in this week episode of Be Inclusive TV, I will get through the practicalities of organizing and using teach approach in the school. My name is B, and this vlog is dedicated to advocate truly inclusive provision through well-researched, safe, recommended approaches such as teach. A huge thank you to you if you subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that you are here. If you are new to my channel, uh, welcome and please subscribe as this is uh, free. This week I'm answering the one question and this is a question. Do you have any advice on setting up my first teach station? And the answer is yes. It is my pleasure to help as I love Teach Approach and I was lucky enough to introduce it in my school. Of course, I know nothing about the child age or interest, deficit skills, so don't forget to adapt everything to the child's needs, but the principles of setting the workstations are the same. So, in this video, you will find out about what is Stitch, um, where and how um, to place the workstation, where and how to organize the work at the station, and you will find out about the workstation rules. Let me start with definition of Teach. So, Teach means um, treatment and education of autistic and related communication handicapped children. This is the evidence-based program funded by Dr. Eric Skopler in 1972 at the University of North Carolina in the United States of America. Teach approach is extremely effective as the structure that you introduce to the child is a form of behavior management. It will help your pupils to understand your expectations. The physical environment will clearly state when and where um, the child must do the work and what they must do. Predictability helps them to stay calm as well as helps with transition time. There is plenty reason to use teach in each school. Let me give you a few of them. So the first one would be focusing on the child, his existing skills, interests and needs, development of culture of autism, use of visual structure and the organization of the physical environment and resources, which I always call box of all the tasks, support of learning processes, but also leisure and social times, flexibility of teaching, adaptation and individualization of the task, focusing on being independent, helping with organizational skills, and also evidencing child progress on the daily basis and differentiating further if necessary. This approach gives you real data on what your child can do uh, without any help. It will also give you info on how long each child needs to master the new skills. Then you will be able to plan and prioritize more effectively knowing um, the rate of the child learning. This will help you in targeting and challenging your pupils so the child will not feel bored or overwhelmed with the task. 
teach approach proven useful in classrooms for students of all ages and for companies that employ people with special education needs and disability autism in particular. The combination of organization of physical space, scheduling and visual course, teaching methods, adaptation to variation and individualization help children and young people fulfill the task independently and help staff to evidence their progress while avoiding a lot of challenging behavior or refusal. Of course, you can organize whole classrooms and intervention rooms by following teach principles, but you can also use single workstation, schedule visual tasks, etc. in your classroom. One of the important factors um, when organizing teach workstation is the process of setting up the teaching task. Work must be visually organized around child strength and interest. Um, you also um, should uh, organize um, the work around child's level understanding and it should contain visual instructions. So let me show you an example of the workstation that is one of the necessary elements of the teacher approach. So as you can see, the workstation is facing the wall and um, was screened by two shelving units on the left and on the right hand side of the table. This helps children to focus on the work we prepared for them um, so they can avoid unavoidable um, kind of distraction and to organize the task. This combination works best, but um, you can use table screening if that is the only option. On the wall, you can see the schedule, which is organized from top to bottom with the laminated and velcroed pictures, the place for the current task and the finished pocket. There are also visual reminders on what is expected from the child when working at the work session. At this particular session, the child is working from left to right. On the left hand side, you can see folder tasks. Um, on this occasion, the child will be fulfilling three different tasks in one sitting. So how does this work? So the child is trying to use the schedule and the visual first. Simply show the child uh, that we pick up the first top picture up and we place it um, into the velcro spot, which means that I must find the folder or the box with the matching picture from the tasks placed on the left hand side and that's the task that I will be doing. The child picks up the task fulfills it, place the worksheet back into the box or the folder and places the finished work on the right hand side in the basket. On this occasion it's a washing basket. Then the child removes the scheduled picture onto the finished pocket and um, the process starts again until the child will reach the visual representation of choosing. This marks the end of the independent work at the teach workstation. Now the child can enjoy um, his reinforcement for a great beforehand of course time. Choosing folder is velcro to the right hand side of the table and contains two to three types of reinforcements that were pre-selected in the morning by the um, uh, child from the bank of choosing. The adult carefully selects six different pictures representations of the reinforcement that more likely will motivate the child on the day to finish all the prepared work and rotate the reinforcement daily. The reinforcement should be organized and depending on child's needs and skills, you can give 
the child the free access to the motivators or you can teach the child to come over to you and ask you for the prize. If you work with uh, young people, instead of picture schedules, you can prepare the to-do list with ticking boxes or other crossing uh, systems, but the rules are similar. When the child is enjoying um, choosing time, this is a time when uh, the teacher, teaching the assistant or learning support assistant checks the child's work and fulfills the child's records um, to plan more or different activities and to prepare uh, the workstation for the afternoon or for the next day. That will depend, of course, on the school system. Before I will um, talk about the task uh, that we prepare for the child, let me talk about the workstation rules first. Rule number one, when um, you train the child um, to stay at the workstation until the child finishes all the tasks and choose the reinforcement picture. Rule number two, the work must be done independently and adults can only observe the child's work, evidencing the progress, or approach the child only if the child indicated that he needs help by using the visual card that is placed on the wall. All the requested help must be recorded into the child's workstation records and mark appropriately by using the prompting symbols as the work would be supported and this may mean that the child didn't understand the task and requires additional practice time with the adult. Rule number three, all tasks can only be planned and placed in the workstation after the teacher input on the carpet or at the table and after the teaching classes are all learning support assistant uh, work one-to-one -one with the child. This way you will be able to differentiate and adapt the resources to the needs of the individual child. Okay, let's move on to rule number four. Make sure that the level of differentiation, adaptation and individualization of the task meets the child's needs. It is not too easy, so the child can be successful in fulfilling the task independently, but also contain few challenges. This is partly important um, as we do not want children to be bored at the workstation, which would cause the inappropriate behavior, but also we want them to increase their self-esteem and show them um, that they can finish their work independently and enjoy the end prize. Rule number five. All the necessary equipment uh, is supplied for the child and available at the workstation. There are two ways of organizing the resources and this will depend of course on individual child needs. I suggest placing everything in the folder or the box. Let me give you a few examples. When the child is required to cut an object and glue in the right place, then you must place scissors and the glue in the folder. Let me give you another example. If the child will be required to read the text and find and highlight the verbs, then um, the highlighter should be included in the task folder. If the child will be required to sort objects, then objects and clearly marked containers should be included in the box. There is plenty that you can do to motivate children to fulfill the task and you can organize a task in many attractive ways to engage them. If uh, 
you have children struggling with um, fine motor skills, then you can prepare plenty of different ways to practice them fulfilling English or math tasks and um, at the same time practice uh, uh, fine motor skills. Velcro folders and the box task are the most attractive to children and very often we can notice that the, um, the main obstacle to fulfilling the work is child struggling with writing. The understanding is there but the child cannot move forward as he is not able to write. So if you have children struggling with writing and not progressing then replace this element with typing or velcro um, or book test task to check the child's understanding and give them opportunity to work independently so they're not dependent on learning support assistant or the teachers. This way you can truly evidence every tiny progress. The tasks at the workstation are changed on a daily basis and depends on child progress. This means that the child can work at uh, his best and the piece of the work reflects child needs with the appropriate level of the work differentiation and adaptation. You can change one or you can change all the tasks but that will depend on how quickly the child mastered the task or fulfilled the worksheets. What I like the teacher approach is that this approach fulfills our duty to deliver child-centered and evidence-based teaching when supporting and helping children with special education needs and disability. Okay, there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed my video today and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you have more questions about teacher approach, please feel free to ask me. I have plenty of experience in organizing the whole classrooms by using teacher approach in the school with flexible 3 to 6 workstation system, social skills group table, uh, transition areas, etc. I hope that I was able to give you some basic information to get your workstation started. You will be amazing. After you finish this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe. This will help my channel immensely and I will be able to make vlogs like this and you will be able to learn for free. That's it for today and I will see you next Thursday. Bye!